Hi, I'm Paul. Hi, I'm Diane. And we are Car Zombies. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and so today we're gonna work on my brake. So my car, I got the brake lining light on. It seems like we never get around to our original committed projects, do we? No, in fact, we worked on the garage. Yeah, we cleaned up the garage, made it all nice, got some organizing. So we're gonna get back into the mode. Hopefully we'll start cars. fixing real problems again. Yes. But brakes are real problems and they're real important, so. Yes, so how did you know you needed to change your brakes? The brake lining light went on. Oh. It goes beep, and so I had to do it. Oh, okay. That's not good. <laughs> no. And they say that it's going to be probably the front brakes. So we're going to do the front brakes first. And then we're going to look at the rear brakes and probably change them if it needs it. We're going to change sensors and we'll see if it works. Should be fun. I've never done it before. You've never done it before. No. We're not experts, so we don't copy not. us. Okay, so I'm this lady, so I'm gonna go give so them So why don't we, yeah, we're, we're, let's just start right into what kind of parts and stuff do we need for this project? Okay, the first thing is brake pads and sensors. I did notice that some of these look like the ones I saw in the videos, like this one did, it's kind of a long skinny thing. And some of these look completely different to me, like I never saw a video with something like this, so. We're gonna need Brake cleaner. Put this down so everyone can see it in that light, that camera up there. WD-40. WD-40. Anti-seize lubricant. Anti-seize. Threading locking compound. Here's a thread lock. It's uh, one that you used on your car, so we put it in a plastic baggie. And you got the brake paste? Yes, right here. This okay. is the stuff we used on your Mercedes. Should be fine. The dot for brake fluid. <laughs> I grabbed it. All right, what else do we need? Okay, we need mask, gloves, and paper towels. The dot four was on the others. Page the, uh, so it's not her fault. Wire either. or zip tie. I believe yes! I found it in a drawer. To so. hold up the caliper. So. Yep, so that should work. Okay. That's it. So now we are on to tool. So 17 millimeter socket ratchet and breaker bar. Here's my 17 millimeter deep socket breaker bar and a ratchet. Okay, it says you need a wire brush. We couldn't find a good one, but this should work. Ow! <laughs> Ow! <laughs> That's... <laughs> <laughs> What's that called? Schattenfreude? <laughs> Where you get pleasure from other people's pain? <laughs> That's not it. I'm just I'm just very visual and oh. I like <laughs> it's like comic or okay. really cartoons. <laughs> Screwdriver, seven millimeter hex socket and ratchet. Alright, so the seven millimeter hex socket is run by a three eighths inch ratchet. So I got this three eighths inch ratchet. But the thing's going to be kind of behind us and it may need a breaker bar. So I got a longer one to use as a breaker bar, but I don't think I'll need more than that. But if I do, we do have breaker bars. We can grab one. Yes. But I saw somebody use something like this once and that's kind of neat because you're working behind yourself. The wheels right it here. It does look cool. Yeah, I so like it's kind of neat. So we'll see if that works too. Okay. Oh, and we need the torque wrenches for both. Here's the half inch torque wrench, which we'll use for the wheel bolts. And this is a 3 8 inch, which we'll use for the hex bolts on the, holding the caliper in. And the brake pry tool. We never used that for my car. It didn't work on your car. Yes. In, in fact, I was almost going to throw it away, and I'm so glad I didn't because, I, in fact, I found it in the metal waste because we're going to recycle yes. it because I figured I'll never use it and it wasn't that expensive. And then my brake lining light went on and I, I watched a video. I go, oh my gosh. <laughs> we needed took it. Out of the, <laughs> thank God we didn't go to recycle that week. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Can, that's it. That's it, we're at, yep. so we're gonna get to fix my brakes. I can't Yay! wait. Okay, so, so with the magic of video, we're gonna not explain how to jack up the car and everything. Go watch our other video for yes. that. And we're just gonna snap our fingers on three and poof, we're gonna be in the garage ready to work. Ready? One, One two, two, three. <laughs> wait, on three. No. Oh. <laughs> One, two, two three. three. And we met in band and, we <laughs> and we're not synchronized. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this time we will be gone. Okay, Come on. <laughs> see ya. See you in a bit. <laughs> so through the magic of video, the car is supposed to be jacked up, but it isn't. It's just in the garage. Why? Because there's something we have to do before we jack up the car. What do we do? We need to clean the area around the brake fluid So you want cap. to clean it because you don't want any debris to get in your brake fluid. It says uh, we leave it off until the entire repair so there is less resistance when spreading the calipers. Okay, so let me talk about that a little bit. So what's, okay. what, what happens is we're going to be, our old brakes have worn down so that the brakes now, in order to close on both sides of the, of the rotor, have to be really close. 
And so there's more brake fluid in the lines to push those brake fluid, those brake mm. pads together. Makes sense. Right? right? So we're gonna put in these really thick new brake pads and that's gonna squeeze it out a little bit, which is gonna push fluid into the, up the, the hoses and it may come out the top. So we wanna make sure we catch set it that. aside in a way that's pretty clean so I don't get any debris inside the cap. And it says make sure the brake fluid isn't too full. I'm gonna put this uh, paper towel on top just so that no debris gets in while we're working. Exactly. That's and right. if we do push it up, this paper towel will get wet first. Exactly. And you leave the hood open. Loosen the wheel bolts with 17 millimeter breaker Oops. bar. There is a step here. Remove, I know there is, I can see it. Remove the hubcap by turning it counterclockwise and pulling it off. Like that, then pop off. Ooh. So that I have to do. Spiffy. What's next, boss? Okay, loosen wheel bolts with 17 millimeter breaker bar. I put wheel chocks first. Thanks. Check up the front or back but of the car. Let's see, we just need the wheels off the ground. Yeah. Okay, we're back. We got it jacked up. I'm gonna remove the wheel and then we're gonna start working on the brake pads. Remove the wheel bolts and the wheel. The last thing we did is put a wheel under the rocker panel. So we did that, but now we have to put a broken down cardboard box under the exposed wheel hub. It's gonna be messy so from right now on. So right here is the sensor. Mm -hmm. it, and it's routed through, this is a bleed hole for bleeding the brake fluid when you put new brake fluid in the whole car. And it looks like it plugs in right here. One of the things we can do to make this easier. Yeah. And now this is only me talking. I didn't see anyone do it in a video. But what if we turn the wheel? Oh, it's turning. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Makes it a lot easier to work on. Yes, it that does. That was an entirely a Paul hack that I thought of. I was thinking, you know what? Why don't we just turn it as we work? Okay, so um, we're gonna use a wire brush or and to clean off any rust on the caliper. I want you to wear a mask too. I don't wanna wear a mask. I want you to wear a mask. You don't mouth off to me. No mouth off, I just don't want to wear a mask. Be a man, put a mask. <laughs> nice look. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Okay, use a wire brush to clean off any rust on caliper. Just on the caliper? Yeah, be careful not to hit the inside of caliper where there is a dust seal on the piston. Okay. Oh, no rust, I don't have a lot of rust on mine. A lot of no. the videos I saw had a lot of rust. Really? I don't want to hit this wire, I yeah, guess. Yeah, no. But since I'm not using brake fluid cleaner, I'm not wearing a mask because it's hard to breathe. Yeah, well that stuff's going to really stink. When I get to that point, I'll put it on. So we're going to pull out the Looks sensor. Like I feel like I'm breaking there. this. Yeah, it's kind of chipping out the... See, it's kind of a um, oh, it's kind porcelain of... or something. Yeah. I'm kind of breaking it, so maybe once we get it out, We'll It'll be able come to, off. We'll be able to tell how we're supposed to do it. Now this routing, is this a rubber cap? Yeah, there's just a rubber cap on that, so I could take it out like that. And then at the top, I'm expecting it to be all the way to the big fat part. That's where it's plugged in. So I see this. Nice. Wash the rotor and calipers before disassembling. disassembling. Now with the mask and glasses, I am now blind. Do I wash it like it with the paper towel? Goal is to wash off brake dust. Oh, I, I get it. So we don't get any brake dust as we're working. That makes sense because brake dust is really fine and can cause exactly. respiratory it's, problems. Right, it's very dangerous for you. So none of my videos showed me how to do this one. <laughs> hmm. Okay, yeah, that's not surprising. When this thing hangs, give me that hanger uh, wire. Okay. I'm gonna get ahead of that. You that's get a good it. idea. I'm gonna hang it on this hook, so I can then just I'm hang I'm gonna it have right to get there. a different size socket, it looks like, for these top. It, it's not seven millimeter hex socket? No. Ow. <laughs> you did it again. This brush is going to hurt you. Oh. oh, you can see writing on there. German writing. I see these little rubber dudes. Yeah. I, I was wondering, remember when I said they gave me this stuff? Yeah. I didn't recognize. Oh, that's right. Those are them. Yeah. So they actually gave me the exact correct brakes. That's Auto House. I'll give them credit. Must just be a newer model brake they did. 
everybody has older cars when you watch the video. 13 mm -hmm. is the right size. Okay, so I'll get you the tool that bends. Try the bent ratchet head, see if it works, because that looked really cool. Yeah, it does. There you go. You didn't use this on yours because I didn't have that idea. I almost need a breaker bar for this. Really? Almost. But it's turning. Oh, it's got another one on the inside, so now I need a wrench. Probably the same size, maybe a little bit. Feeling bigger. a lot more confident that we got the right brake pads. Yeah, that's good. That looks pretty good. That's a 15. So we need a 15 millimeter wrench and a, Rent, a, and 13. a 13 millimeter socket. Before I take it off, I'm going to break the bottom. I'm gonna just wear regular gloves. I feel so guilty standing here. And you doing all the work. Yeah, you should. I should? <laughs> I should feel guilty. <laughs> That's funny because you now know how I felt. Imagine me being a big old man ready to do the work, having to watch you fix your car. Especially when the transmission and working on it and doing all this stuff under there. But you did help a lot. Okay, that one's out. Now I should be able to take this off. And the brake pads are just falling right out. Oh, really? Yep, there's one. And here's the other one. I'm gonna hang it before I go too far, just because I don't want to put pressure. How, how thick okay. are the brake pads? Now you can see that this thing. Oh, wow. It's starting to kind of, oh. This is the brake pad part. It still has a lot of meat on it, but the sensor was getting rubbed and somehow that started to set it off. Or it's the back sensor that was going off mm. and we didn't need to do the front, one or the other. I mm -hmm. don't know which. Which one was this one on? Was it the outside or the inside? I don't remember which one had the sensor because it started breaking it on the bottom. Okay, it must have been like this. This must have been the inside. So the inside is where we're gonna do the sensor. So we gotta make it up as we go. I didn't have a video on this. It's a different kind of sensor, different kind of brake pad. Okay. This comes out as well. I take off this little rubber part, and that's the guide pin. So we have to clean these old guide pins. Mm -hmm. Brake cleaner is probably as good as anything. Use brake pry tool to pry the inner brake pad into the piston. This is the piston right here, and we gotta somehow push it in that way. And to do that, we use this brake pry tool, which is gonna need something to push on. Didn't we do this? We had to push something on there when we did I'm ours. I'm gonna put a brake back on. So that I could put a brake like that, mm -hmm. put the put the piss, this part on that, but I'll put it like this, and I'll use that brake pad, that old brake pad, to push the piston away from us. Oh yeah. And you're gonna watch to see if it overflows fluid above me. Okay. All right, this fits in now. Oh, there's brake. It's already wet coming out of it at the top. Oh, it is? Yeah. Ooh, good to know. Well, it could be that the paper towel just soaked it up and drew it out that yeah. way. Yeah. Dye says it's getting wet already, and I can see that. You can see that. This old paper towel's a little wet. Hold your garbage can for me, Dye. I'm going to try to put it in there. Ready? Oop, dripping. Now, fresh towel. Now the level's way down there. Good. You gotta sit it beside, set beside there. And then as I pry this brake pad wider, mm -hmm. tell me if it looks like it's gonna cause a problem. I'm sure the dust seal isn't binding up. What does that mean? The dust seal is, you know how the piston has like one of these things, but there's one on the piston, like, oh. a, little, like a seal. And you don't wanna, while you push the brake pad in, somehow crimp that pad seal, but I don't even see hardly any dust seal here. I mean, this brake pad's still pretty thick. Yeah. It is. Compared to the new ones, mm -hmm. the new ones, this is about half oh, as wow. thick. I mean, this had a lot of life on it, to be yeah, honest. We, I did, know. we probably didn't have to do these. And the reason we're pushing this piston in is so we have more room for these wider brake pads. You can't even see the dust seal now. Mm. It's flat all the way. So the new sensor looks like this. No, it goes, looks like it goes towards the brake pad. See, there's a little hole. Yeah. 
at the top of the brake pad. I'm going to take this little screw on the sensor mm -hmm. and put it into that hole. That's why I couldn't pull it out. You have to have it on when you put it on. If I see if I could push it in and have it click or something. Yep. Yeah. I pushed it in and it clicked. So now my brake pad's ready to go. Nice. And I could just now just set the brake pad up here. These are all the same size. And the sensor's just like it was on the other one. Perfect. It says inspect the rotors for deep scratches and grooves. And there isn't any. This caliper on, just like it was. They want brake paste on the parts of the caliper where the rotor touches it. And I can see it touches it on these two points here. It's hard to get it. Okay, now for the other side, we need to just put it on the, this part and this part, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Sensor through the inside of the caliper. Is there enough brake paste on there? It didn't seem like very much. I'm sure it'll be fine. If I get really squirrely wheels, <laughs> I know. It's my own fault. Oh, wait, keep your finger. Yeah, I got my finger. <laughs> it's attached. <laughs> For this, I'm gonna just try to put a little bit right here. Mm -hmm. Just kind of smear it around. How about the end of it? Oh, no, it doesn't need to be there. All right, so I'm gonna take this, put it in like that. We're gonna have the little rubber thing there and then the out part. Okay. Thanks for helping. No problem. I'm here for. Do I need thread lock? Yes, it's right here. I remember with this, they say just put a little bit at the tip and it'll work yeah. its way in. I remember that too. You got your finger handy? New finger. New finger? Yeah, still. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, I forgot. It's real li liquidy. Oh, I don't need a finger then. It's like super glue, remember? Mm hmm. Okay. I got it on the tip. So it looks like it goes over this cap. Be good from this angle. And then put this bolt in. Oh, this was probably, oh, I bet the rubber, I'm thinking the rubber goes like this. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah, because remember, that looks like oh, what I had. Oh, that looks right. That makes a lot more sense. When we do the other side, if we see it's different, we'll leave this wheel off just in case. We'll change it and fix mm -hmm. it, all right? All right. I have to hold one like this. Do you want me to hold it? Oh, that would be nice. <laughs> right. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, with you holding it, it's a lot easier. Then this goes in here. Yeah. Now I could take this off. It's being held by the bottom, so I'm okay. All right, this. Why isn't it going in? Yeah, over over tight the bottom. Yeah, maybe too tight. Hmm. I didn't think I tightened it that much. Oh. Yeah, but I mean... Now I gotta put thread block on the tip of another you one. Know, I tried to do this and keep my hands clean so that you I could tell. Mm -hmm. Neither of us succeeded. I know. Yeah. I don't know if I like this crooked or not. It's like, it's a little easier when it's okay. straight. Let's, we gotta get the torque wrench. 32 Newton meters torque. Yeah, brake hose is a little bit in the way. So what is? Oh, that's it. You got it, huh? Yeah. The brake hose was kind of in the way. Got it. When do you use this anti-seize lubricant? I'm going to use it on the wheel right after this. Actually, no one I saw did it, but I remember changing the, a flat on this car and not being able to get started at all. Now, if you look inside of this, you can kind of see there's like one piece that goes deep and the other piece that goes high, that's a male and a female. Obviously, just line that up with the opposite on the other one. And there it goes. Mm -hmm. right in. That's what I did. Let's hope it works. All right, last step is to put anti-seize on the part where the wheel, see there's a little rust all the way around there mm -hmm. and, and a little bit even on the flat part. The wheel's gonna go there 
and you, you really don't want anti-seize on the rotor. rotor because that has to seize. The brake will have to grab it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put a little bit of it just around here. Maybe just nowhere near the rotor. Touch the rotor. And now if I'm on the side of the freeway, I don't have to kick my car while it's on a rickety jack. Good idea. To try to get this wheel to break off. Is that right there? It looks like something break. Yep. Thanks for helping me. Let's do the other wheel. Okay. Let's leave the rest of this here, including the cardboard. Yes. And I also want to look as the rubber things had a, a, a small hole and a big hole. I put the big hole towards the bolt. Oh, okay. Which makes sense, but I just want to double check all that. That's great. Good thing I didn't test the brakes. I should say something about that. Don't test the brake until after you've done both sides because otherwise you're going to clamp it in here too and it'll make it really hard to change this side. It clamps it in? Well, yeah, because the, the brakes clamp them all. Oh, yeah. So if we had tested that other one by trying to push on the brake pad, I think we did this with your car. Did you notice there's no uh, sensor on this side? We did the hard you're one right. first. Yeah, I remember reading about that. There's only one in the front and the one in the back. Yep. So you see how you have it, you have the bolt here and the rubber gasket mm -hmm. here. It looks like the fat part is towards the bolt. I think I need a breaker bar for this. Yeah. Oh, right off, mm -hmm. it's broke. Okay, brake pads are, yeah, the wider hole is actually on this side. Mm-hmm, towards the yeah, because it's outside. It slips on the there first. You know what? It looks like it's worth changing. Oh yeah, I was thinking the same thing. We've got to do it right. Yeah, let's change it. Let's do it right. The wider, see there's a big hole here and a little hole here. The big hole goes onto the outside lip of this before you even put the the bolt in. Do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's got to kind of grab a hold of that whole lip. I think I got it. Yeah, he did. Put it in the hole. Big smudge here. Put the brakes on. Are you ready? Mm hmm. Oh, we didn't open it yet. The brake spreader. Oh, the spreader, of course. This is hard to do left handed. Okay. That should be all right. And we got to put a little bit of thread locker on these bolts. Mm hmm. That's enough. Same as last time. I can't seem to get the other bolts on at the same time. Oh no. There it goes. Thank you. Huh. That was killing me. Hang on, we gotta do it again. Okay. For the torque, ready? Uh-huh. How did these brake pads look? They look fine, didn't they? Yeah. We have to take apart the other side yep. and flip those seals. Right. You're really a helpful in the garage, you know? I try to be. Well, doing cars is kind of interesting. Yes, we're getting good at it too. I don't want to be one of those people that go to a garage and they're like, people, the, the guy talks to you and they're like, they act we like We need the did. thread locker. I know. Okay. They act like, you don't, you're a girl, you don't know anything. That's smart, we did it the right way. I'm getting good at putting these on. Mm -hmm. They should hire me at the factory. You think they're still making this car? Uh, no. They might hire you at the museum, the car museum. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to say? <laughs> I'm a museum relic. Oh. Uh, I know nothing. <laughs> that is badness. Where did you come up with that one? What do they call those people that do the um, the tours of the... Um, a guide? Yeah, yeah the what do guide? they call them? They, there's a name for that. I don't think this is going anywhere <laughs> than good, productive. <laughs> so I'm not going to help you with this one. There, we did it right. Can't say I... Yes. Cut that corner. Good job. All right. No corners cut, ready to put the wheels on. I'm just kind of disappointed we couldn't solve the brake lining problem. 
You mean why the light came on? Yeah. I think it's because that first the that first sensor was rubbed all the way to the sensor. Yeah. I mean the brake pad the sensor was touching the rotor. Mm -hmm. Whereas um, that makes sense. So it's at that point they're giving you the warning because what they're probably thinking is you may you know the other brake pad could be half as thick. Mm -hmm. So they're giving you a warning such earliness that you can really get it resolved quickly. But you, you see that light and you're worried. You're, you're afraid to use your brakes. We're going to yep. test it. Now, here's, a, here's a, a, a tip from me just from looking at how all this all works. Had I tested the first wheel before working on the second wheel, yeah. I think it would have been a lot harder to take that caliper off because it would have been tight on. Yeah. So I'm kind of happy we put both of these on. We got them the way we want them. We double checked everything. Now we're going to test it. So that's going to squeeze those brake pads in. And the brake pads normally would come apart, but that's when the car is running. I'm not going to start the engine up for the test. I'm just going to push on it and see if it locks up the rotor. So this rotor here spins. Can you Can we get go in? in? Yeah, get in there and just push on the brakes when I tell you to, okay? I'll be pushing, I'll be spinning the rotor and you hit the brake. Okay. Once it compresses, I don't think it might un not uncompress. Okay. All right, ready? Ready. Tell me Do when. Push, you're pushing on hard on the brake, you're pushing on oh, the... Oh, there it is. Are you pushing on the choke? Or the clutch? Try the brake. It's dark in here. Oh, there it is. The middle one. There it is. Oh, I see it. You got it now. A little bit harder. That's it? That's it. Now let me try the other one. Yeah. Oh, I can't turn it now. Did you push it even harder? No, I just lifted and then I pressed again. Oh, so pumping it. Yeah, that, yeah. So you got to pump it. Oh, interesting. They are really are tight now. There's okay. New, yay, 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 yay. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. we got it. So. Wheel bolts. It's supposed to hand Okay, that's holding. Now the wheel hopefully won't fall off. Go on a star pattern. So I did that one, so I did this one. We'll okay. do the final torquing after we lower it. Okay. Because we need it, the wheel to not spin. All right, makes sense. Okay, so let's do this side. They're pretty light wheels compared to your car. I know, mine are heavy. I should use my other tool now. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go get it. Let's see if that works. I got a tool I haven't used, a power tool. Pulls my fingers into <laughs> the thing. But hey, it was better than having to hand turn them all the way in. Lower the car off. What's my number? 110 Newton meters. Hey, I only got four on this. Oh, I should have left the wheel chocks. You, I tighten them and then remove the wheel chocks. Oh. Am I gonna what? You gonna ride with me on my native voyage for new brakes? Yeah. Tighten, then remove. We did it. And it says put the wheel bolt protector cap back on and tighten until it clicks. Okay, I got nice. the key here because I was turning the wheel. Put my seatbelt in case the wheel falls off. <laughs> it won't. Well, one good piece of news is, it says the brake lighting light is still on. Oh, so you so think it's the So it was the, the rear brakes that were causing the, the problem or I didn't do the sensor correctly. I'm guessing it's the rears that needed the brake pads. Yeah. So we just changed the wrong side. Yeah, they, they seem fine. Hang on, I'm gonna do a fast one. But they seem really good. Yeah, they seem so great. So I'm gonna take a little, I, that, I don't wanna push them too hard, too fast, but we'll go down that hill and let it slowly okay. wear the brake pads a little bit. Yeah. So they wear smoothly and evenly, not like get jerked into life. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we, we did the test drive. It, it was perfect. I didn't see, yeah. I didn't hear any squeal or work. They're tight, they're, they're not too tight. I mean, uh, what do you, how do you test brakes? They just work. Yeah, but the brake lining is still, the brake light's still on. Good point. Yeah. <laughs> so we will do the backs for sure. I was thinking mm -hmm. we could delay them if we had to, but now we know we have to. So we're just going to go right to jacking up the car and working on the rear. Okay, sounds good. All right, great. So first we open the hood like we did last time. Yeah. Went like this. It just, uh -huh. maybe I bruised it by pushing too much pressure. Like, Boy, that looks bad. Oh, wow. It was like, I'll wow. just say you got bruises because you're hitting me. <laughs> Wait, I got bruises because you're hitting me. <laughs> oh, because it's on the hand? Yes. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Oh, man, how do I get in these situations? 